Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to Business Over Coffee. I'm Sean Carroll Sandy. They let me have the hot seat. <laughs> Somebody let me sit here. Um, I'm here today interviewing Elizabeth Moss. She is she's come down from Nashville, Tennessee, to spend some time with us this morning, and all of the awesome collaborative business partners here. Um, check out this interview. You can Twitter at Bo Coffee hashtag BOCI. We are going to give you any number of ways that you can share, collaborate, and uh, view interviews and just really participate in the conversations and engage with what's going on with Business Over Coffee and the awesome professionals that we're interviewing today. Elizabeth Moss, her business is Caregivers by Whole Care and Care Adv Advocates with Whole Care. And her Twitter handle is at Whole Care. W-H-O-L-E-C-A-R-E. And she's uh, tweet to her because she's learning Twitter, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So tell us about your business and tell us about what it means to be in the senior industry, in the senior care industry in this day and time. Well, it's very exciting and it's ever-changing. Mm -hmm. um, as most people are aware or need to be aware that we are all aging and we've got this tsunami of people that oh, are that's coming, a good way to put it. Yes, <laughs> that are coming and issues that are dealing with those of us that are um, aging that we're not prepared for. Right. And so we like to help people be proactive in preparing for that. However, most people come to us in a crisis. Okay, okay. So the key there, be prepared, but you're there for a crisis too. I, I work with some other clients in the senior industry and Here's some interesting statistics that someone turns 50 every seven seconds. Oh, and that by wow. 2015, yeah. I think it's 40, at least 45% of the population will be over 50. Oh, wow. So you're either <laughs> getting there yourselves or you're, at, at that point, you're taking care of or participating in the care of someone who is in the senior category. Um, now, most people think of senior care uh, as sitters. We talked about this a little bit, but that's not what you do. Tell us about what, where the need has shifted and what the reality of what you do looks like now on a daily basis and what that means for the people who engage your services. Okay, well, to speak to the reality and statistics to respond to that, um, Eleanor Roosevelt said all that many years ago, there are only four types of people. One is that people who are caregivers people who have been caregivers, people who will be caregivers, and people who know someone who's a caregiver. Wow. That's every single one of us. And what the impact of that is, is that as women, as women business owners, mm -hmm. then we're doing double duty. Oh, and yeah. so most times we're caught in the sandwich generation, which is a very popular term. Mm -hmm. We're raising children or raising grandchildren um, and caring for our parents or grandparents or neighbor or cousin or whoever, right. some loved one. But in regard to the industry and what the label is that it's called, it's called the sitter industry, which has always been a pet peeve of mine mm -hmm. because it certainly implies that someone's just sitting there as a companion or as nothing. My right. background is as a charge nurse on an assisted living unit. Oh wow! And I really did see the sitters come in ring for the nurse or the caregiver on the floor if that client needed something, mm -hmm. which didn't make sense to me. Um, so our, we call our caregivers professional caregivers. That's right. what they are. I believe that if you treat people, call people professionals, they rise to the occasion mm -hmm. and they are what you say they are. So it's been a goal of mine to increase the professionalism of this worker, direct care workers in the industry. Right. So what you're doing is you're, you know, what I advise most everyone is to gain a competitive advantage, you create a new category. So you're essentially taking what's been known and what's been done and you're moving it to a next level and you set yourself apart from everyone else by changing, almost maybe change the industry, changing the way people do that. What, what's been some, what have been some strengths for you to um, collaborate or to call on the strength of other business partners or business women that you know of. What do you use to sort of help build you and, and give you the legs under your professional goals? As a business owner, I think early on, um, I pull, there was a, a women's resource center in mm -hmm. Nashville at the time, and I 
found them, went to them, learned from them, pulled from those women that were part of that resource center, and learned from them. Right. That's how I found NABO. Awesome. Um, and I've been a member of NABO the, ever since. Of the NABO Memphis. Great NABO. NABO, NABO, NABO Nashville. Nashville. NABO Nashville. <laughs> NABO Nashville. And, you know, have used the women in that organization to bring on board mm -hmm. um, to work with me and to learn from them and use their services. Do you think that there is a really special place for women in business because women are the caretakers? And I know it speaks directly to your business, but we are the caretakers, we are nurturers, we have the empathy, and we're collaborators too. Do you think that that gives us a special edge in businesses that deal with something so emotional and is so personal as caretaking for seniors? It does give us an edge, and it also, I think it's a double-edged sword yeah. at times because we are nurturers, we are givers, and we give and give and give and give. Mm -hmm. And so my message to women business owners is it's the oxygen principle. You've got to put the oxygen on yourself before you can care for anybody that. or you're wow. not going to be there for them. You, it, statistically, family caregivers or those who are in a full-time caregiving position directly will their health will decline probably right. seven to ten years um, faster than the person they're caring for and wow. so you're not going to be able to be there so I've got two companies caregivers mm -hmm. by whole care which is the non-medical side and care advocates with whole care the model is whole care because I learned also that in this industry it's because of the sitter it's very medical mm -hmm. based right. even though it's non-medical it's symptomatic mm -hmm. and Excuse so me. if we look at the whole person body mind and spirit mm -hmm. that's my lifestyle it's what I believe people deserve right. and I think I want people to feel cared for and cared about and to do that you've got to look at the whole person so caregivers by whole care our caregivers are engaging and engaged caregivers we want our clients to feel like they're participating in life they still have purpose and we can help them by coming underneath them to support them in living the same lifestyle they've been accustomed to right. but with that support so they're not just passengers on the train right you engage them and you engage probably all aspects of their family to take care of them and um, that's more about collaboration which is you know that's why we're all here and I love the mind, body, spirit because we've, we've got to take care of ourselves and, and in order to take care of the people we love and, and collaborate and take care of the people that we do business with. And um, this is a great collaboration tool, the power of collaboration in business. We have some of the authors here in our room today. Shelly Bauer, Jana Cardona, Joe Garner, Carolyn Bendel, Mary Singer, Deborah Norwood, Terry Murphy, Delmar Johnson. The power of collaboration and the power of being whole. Um, tell me one thing people be surprised to know about you. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty open. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I I don't have a clue. Like, <laughs> somebody might no be secrets. surprised about. No secrets. Okay. Really not. <laughs> well, since you do spend so much time in your business, uh, what is the one piece of advice you give to people as we're approaching this age where we are, I know I'm going to be in the sandwich generation too, taking care of my young children and my mother, maybe eventually, or at least supporting her in that. What what would you advise people? Go ahead and think about this. Okay. What are the wishes of your loved one? Mm -hmm. Can it collaborate with the professionals mm -hmm. in this field to help plan for that process so that you're not caught in a crisis and there is no time for planning then right it's not an easy process it's a very emotional process mm -hmm. but it's a necessary process mm -hmm. we offer a, a book that we've compiled it's not one we've written mm -hmm. but it's called our caring and sharing notebook it is free to anyone so if anybody would like to sit down over coffee and collaborate with us can is that something they can find online uh, no, not yet. <laughs> but we can mail it. We okay. can have the conversation over the telephone. Okay. You know, virtually have a cup of coffee. Right. And go through that process and share our experience and expertise with people. Care Advocates with Whole Care is a medical care management business. Okay. We can 
big hair managers from anywhere. Okay, so you kind of cover, run the gamut. You've got sort of the engaging, the spiritual side of things, and t taking someone as a whole person as they go on this journey, and then supporting them through the care, but then you've also got the medical piece of it. Um, where, I mean, do you ever cross any financial piece of that? I mean, people, it's it got to be expensive to care for someone. How does that work, and do you guide people, or do you advise people to plan ahead by doing X, Y, Z to prepare for the financial part of caring for someone? We do. We help them identify where the per person is, mm -hmm. what those future needs might be, and in response to the collaboration, there's elder law attorneys right. to collaborate with, there's long-term care insurance providers, or if there's one a, a policy in place, then that does help pay for the services. Our niche market mm -hmm. is the private pay market. Okay. Um, but there's Medicaid services. We can certainly, as a care management company, help guide that process to find the resources, to, no matter what the financial situation is. Okay. Sherry, you have a question. <laughs> we have a question in the audience, okay. and then I have a few things on virtual. Question in the audience. Yes. I, hello. Hi. I am a registered nurse, and um, so I see a lot of what you're talking about with the caregivers being really fatigued and tired. So my question is, how can we as nurses, are you integrating into the hospitals to help the nurses as we speak with the family members who are tired, we would love to be able to tell them about a business where they can get some respite care and they're able to rest while someone's taking care of their family members. Fabulous. We are really working that um, path in Nashville. For anywhere else, I would recommend, and there's a woman that just recently moved, speaking of collaboration, from LA to Franklin, Tennessee, outside of Nashville. Her name is Cindy Lafferty, and her company is The Care Company. She's an online service that helps family caregivers or nurses connect those families to her that she's a care coach. She's going to love that I mentioned her today. Um, I just met her last week, and we have really clicked and um, gotten somewhere. So there are resources in every community, but certainly as the professional caregiver in a hospital environment, finding through the discharge planners possibly those resources that you're, because it's hard to get in to the nurses past the discharge planners from our perspective. So you going to the discharge planners and saying, look, this is what we need, we see the need is, asking for those resources would be helpful. I wanted to ask a question. Are you from, uh, familiar with or are you a part of the National Women Survivors Convention that comes from out of Nashville. They had a big convention in, in June. Um, I'm not. I don't know about they, them. Uh, there was like there was like 800 at the conference. But one of the uh, founders of the group is a group is also works with me because I'm a legislative advocate for the American Cancer Society, the Cancer Action Network, and we are looking for people to collaborate with around the uh, around the state as a part of the Tennessee Cancer Coalition. So I wanted to, I'm getting all this information and I'm going <laughs> Oh, great. And thank you. Yes, I'd love to know more about that. That's great. Sure. Virtually, we have a few things that are being said. One is Sean Sandy is an idea powerhouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Pro Forma Printing just blew my mind with their new amazing new oh, business card look. Awesome. And learning about increasing professionalism of caregiving industry. Great. Awesome. And so sort of the trends I see are that you need to look for collaboration and those clearing houses for information and communication. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here today. Thank and we have Sandy. to thank our sponsors, BOCI uh, sponsors, Coffee, the life breath of what we do. <laughs> better life with better coffee. <laughs> uh, Ricardo Johnson, make sure you go out and get some of this great coffee. We have Sarah Henley, Patty Cake Bakery. Um, it's all about food today. I'm yeah. starving. Yeah. Yeah. Gina Davis, Custom yeah. Growth Group, Susan David, Digital Oatmeal, Samantha Green, Lily's Gourmet Bakery. I've got some jalapeno cornbread uh, muffins in front of me. I'm going to take down. And I hear they're gluten free as well. Uh, Mike Esposito, Pinpoint Visibility, Delmar Johnson of DelmarJohnson.com, Nashville Novo. We have two Nashville Novo members in the house. Woo -hoo. Woo. Women Partners <laughs> from Atlanta, Melinda Reed, Plexus, uh, Slim which I hear is fantastic. Sherry's a high, uh, high, <laughs> highly talks that. 
as well as, uh, again, Better Life, Better Coffee. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. You can tweet us at BO Coffee, hashtag BOCI, or you can also go to businessovercoffee.com. Uh,